Let's see you can play. Hey gamers, welcome back to part 2 of my painting tutorial for the War Machine Galleon. During this part I'll be covering oil washes, water effects, and rust effects. Hope you enjoy. The first step in detailing the armor was going back and edge highlighting the blue areas of the armor using a mix of Stegodon scale green and white mixed one to one. I did the same for the brown parts of the armor plate, except mixing Reaper Mask Series Leather Brown 1 to 1 with white, and then edging. I then went over most of the edges using Privateer Press Paint's Pig Iron to act as chip paint and battle damage. I then use a sponge to paint on even more pig iron, just at random intervals over the entire model to simulate where shrapnel were, just general stuff in the air may have chip paint that wasn't hard edges and obvious corners that would have been brushed. I then finally assembled the body to the legs and the arms of the body using super glue. With a model more steady like this, I went back to the head and started painting the windows, starting with a layer of warpstone glow. I then went over the bottoms of what each panel would be with mood green to highlight. I then drew the lines separating each panel using a mix between Sigrax bronze and shining gold. I then painted war paint onto the face and an ID number on the plaque above the crane using Stegodon scale green. Here's the model as it enters the final stages of washing and resting. In preparation, I sprayed the entire model using Minotaur Paints Satin Varnish using an airbrush. I then prepared an oil wash by mixing oil paint with white spirit and then painted it onto the model around the cracks and around the bolts and nuts and other raised areas. After that I dipped a Q-tip in white spirit to make it damp but not entirely wet and then dragged it over the surface to wipe off most of the wash in areas that weren't in exact cracks or edges and that kind of stuff. I also used it to smear certain areas to make it look like the grime had started to run down the plates. Here's the model with the oil wash complete. I then gave the model another coat of satin varnish to seal in the wash. After that was dried, I decided to adhere some soot to the chimneys. To do this, I painted matte varnish onto the area around the top of the chimney, in a more jagged pattern so it wouldn't look completely artificial. I then sprinkled black pigment onto the area I had painted with matte varnish.
To make it look a little more natural, I then brushed my finger lightly over the model to take it off the edges to make it look like the soot had settled more in the cracks. After this, I began painting on the rust. For this, I used Vallejo Model Wash, Light and Dark Rust. I started by painting light rust onto most of the areas I exposed with metal weathering. I then began to add more and more smaller dots of darker and darker rust into the areas I had already washed with light rust. Here's how the model looks with all the paint finally done, excluding the water effects and just painting the rim of the bottom. For this I also added on some cinematic effects I'd been working with. Unfortunately the files became corrupted so I wasn't able to add it into this tutorial. In the future when I do laser blast or other cannon blasts, I'll be showing you how I did that with an airbrush. To create the still water on the base, I used solid water by Deluxe Materials. The walls I made to hold in the water while it was curing was just made from cut up war machine boxes and some tape and a little bit of water effects which you'll see later in the tutorial, just to make sure it didn't leak out. When pouring it, I actually added in a bit of turquoise ink just to give it an effect of depth and to make it appear a little more tropical. After letting it cure for 36 hours, I cut off the walls and filed down the few lips that had formed around the edges. This is how it looked. One of the things I had originally decided I wanted to do was create waterfalls and running water that was flowing off the Colossal. To do this, I painted Liquitex Heavy Gloss Gel onto a table and let it dry overnight. Once it was dry, I then peeled it off and then adhered it to the model painting on some more Liquitex Heavy Gloss Gel on the tops and bottom to create splashes and even some water flowing into the actual flowing waterfall. Although many companies make different types of water effects, what I use is called Liquitex Heavy Gloss Gel and can be found at most places like Wallach's or other art stores. You can get it in a huge container for, I don't know, 10 or 20 bucks and it will last you your entire life. You can paint it on and as it dries, it dries extremely clear and shiny and it loses almost none of its form as it dries, so it can be sculpted into peaks or icicles and stay that way even after it dries for a couple of hours. I then applied some more of the gel to the still water on the base in a back and forth motion, just smearing it with a flat piece of plastic. In areas that would be naturally blocked, I painted much smaller waves using the same style, just with less and less gloss gel. Using large chunks of gel, I carved waves that were crashing on the backs of legs and parts that were splashing, like the waterfall or against the shipwreck. While waiting for the gel to dry, I went back over the seaweed and the coral that was on the armor and started painting it with gloss varnish, just to make it look like it was still wet. Here's how the model looked while the gel was still drying on the base. The last step for the water on the base was to dry brush it lightly in white, in areas where it would naturally be a white cap or bubbles would be appearing from it being moved around.
finally, the last step for the entire model was to paint the arcs and the rim of the base. This step is simple enough, but when I was doing it, I decided to paint it using the exact same colors I'd used primarily on the model, so that means I painted it using Stegodon Scale Green, weathering it using Pig Iron, and adding rust using Vallejo Model Wash. I also painted on the frontline indicator, just using a mix between Sycorax Bronze and Shining Gold, and then washing it with the same wash I'd used originally on the bronze. Once that was all done, I applied a single coat of matte varnish. And with that, the model is fully complete. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope at least something that I've done during this may come in handy for you during a future project. I'm still deciding what I'd like to do for my next video. I've currently got a bunch of big projects on the way, including a Bane Blade which I've converted to be the Lion of Macarius from the Macarian Crusades books, a couple of Gaunt's Ghosts which I'll be painting like the characters from the novels, the Garviel Loken vs. Ezekiel Abaddon from Forge World, as well as the Apocalypse Titan which I've shown you in parts before but I still haven't gotten around to finishing. If any of those sound interesting enough for me to do a video on them, uh, just tell me in the comments and whatever one is probably the most popular I'd be happy to move on to. Thanks for watching.